Hello, my dear students. Um, this is Dr. Amir today, and today's lecture is about or a brief introduction to the second generation of the Romantic poets. To begin with, when the Romantic movement began and when it ended is controversial as there are several conflicting opinions in this regard. It generally agreed that the publication of a preface to the Lyrical Palettes in 1789 by William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge marks the onset of this movement, although some critics argue that the beginning of this movement is with the publication of William Blake's Songs of Innocence in 1789. As we discussed in my introductory lectures, <coughs> Romanticism as an artistic movement adopted poetic characteristics which distinguished it from any literary movement that preceded it. It, for instance, breaks away from the conservative style of new classicism. The first generation of the Romantic poets roughly consists of the following three poets, William Blake, William Wordsworth, and Samuel Taylor Coleridge. The second young generation consists of Percy Shelley, Lord Byron, and John Keats. Although these three poets died very young at the age of 30, 36, 26, respectively, they were considered established poets as they produced significant literary works. These poets began writing at the time when Romanticism had already become a critically recognized movement. There are striking differences between the poets of the two generations, whereas the poets of the old generation tend to be critical to social diseases as they openly criticize social segregation and the oppression of the minorities. The end generation were more critical, less conservative, and aspired to achieve ideal life. This is not to say that there are no commonalities in the poetry of the two generations. The old generation, as a matter of fact, had a profound impact on the young romantic poets. Moreover, the young generation poet and Shelley is a telling example here, are politically radical, who aspire for a profound and realistic socio political change in the English society. Thus, one can easily notice in their poetry an acute denunciation of dominant social, the dominant social practices and the corrupted institutions of the state. Among the dominant themes in their poetry is love, criticism of dictatorship, and socio-political libera liberation. Moreover, these three poets express their religious beliefs or opinions boldly and freely in their poetry. Shelley is one of the most important major poets, not only in the Romantic poet period, but also in English literature. He was commonly considered one of the finest lyric and philosophical poets in English language. He was radical both in his poetry as well as in his political views, However, he was literally underestimated, as he did not see fame during his lifetime. But recognition of his achievements in poetry grew steadily following his death. Though Shelley's poetry and prose output remained steady throughout his life, most publishers and journals declined to publish his work for fear of being arrested for either blasphemy or sedition. Shelley became a key member of a close circle of visionary poets and writers that included Lord Byron, John Keats, Love, uh, Thomas Love Peacock, another, and his second wife, Mary Shelley. Shelley's poetry sometimes had only an underground readership during his, time, his day, but his poetic achievement had become widely recognized today, and this, or his political and social thought, had an impact on the Chartist and other movements in, in, in England and reached down to the present day. Shelley's theories of economics and morality, for example, had a profound influence on Karl Marx, his early perhaps first writing on nonviolent resistance influenced Leo Tolstoy, whose writings on subject in turn influenced Mahatma Gandhi and through him Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. 